Hello and welcome to this chess game review entitled The Missed Check, and we'll find out later uh, what check was missed in this game. Uh, and this was a chess club game that I played uh, a few days ago in which uh, I had the black pieces and I played against a club member named Scott and uh, he begins with c4 here and this is the english opening all right so uh, in this english opening you move the c pawn and you try and control this d5 square here uh, so i debated whether or not to play the hippopotamus defense set up against him which uh, we played before and I started to do that, and then I changed my mind, and it turned into a kind of King's Indian defense. Uh, so he moved his knight out to control the center here. And of course, I moved my bishop here to attack in the center. And now uh, he plays d4. So this is a good setup against uh, somebody fianchettoing their bishop over here. A lot of times this will turn into a King's Indian defense where black will develop their knight here to f6 and castle quickly and white will be able to play uh, either three or even four sometimes pawns in the center and control a lot of the center and black will try and counterattack later. So I continue with knight to f6 and change my mind uh, thinking that I want to do a King's Indian setup. And so he plays g3, and so here uh, I change a little bit, and after castling, uh, and he moves his bishop here, attacking down this diagonal, I decide to play uh, c6 to kind of block off this bishop a little bit. And uh, he responds with bishop to d2 here. So... <clears throat> The computer wants him to play e4 immediately to help fight for control of the center. And because he did not do that, uh, I decided to play d5 right away, which the computer says is best. Uh, that way, uh, it would fight for the center. And because he did not play e4, I was able to play this move and... Uh, he responds with c5 and the computer says this is a mistake and the game was slightly in black's favor but now it's jumped up even more in black's favor after the c5 move and I tried to look and see why that was a mistake well one it relieves the tension here uh, of this c pawn which is a side pawn attacking this valuable central pawn uh, so the computer says that it would have been best just to take this central pawn with your uh, c pawn to exchange a less valuable pawn for the more valuable central pawn uh, and the computer says that uh, after the c5 move the game may continue with rook to e8 and then uh, now we'll see a battle for the center here and we see this little pawn chain here where white's pawns are pointing towards the queen side uh, black's pawns are pointing towards the king side and often uh, when this happens you want to keep pushing the pawns uh, and extending your chain and also fight for the base of the chain uh, against your opponent's pawn chain. So here, e5 would be a good move to fight and attack the base of this pawn chain. Uh, so rook to e8 was a move to help push this pawn forward. And then knight to f3 would help uh, try and prevent that. Uh, so now, this knight move is played to help fight for this uh, e5 square again. And now the bishop covers it. And so the knight would attack this bishop. Uh, and here, this is what the computer recommends the moves would play out. 
Uh, so it would be a big fight revolving around pushing this e, e pawn to e5 here. Um, and if the knight were to capture here, well then that pawn, it would double pawns up and break these pawns, but white would have a better grip on this e5 square. And uh, the king side could be, uh, would be open a little bit and maybe an attack down toward black's king side uh, could be used by white if this king side is broken apart here. Uh, but now we see the computer recommends a continuation of b6 where uh, play has been slowed down trying to move to e5 and attack the base of this pawn chain. So the second way to attack it is at the top of the chain. So pushing this pawn here to b6 to attack the pawn at the head of the chain here on b, or excuse me, on c5. And so the game may continue with capture, recapture, uh, the rook moving to this half, half open c file and the bishop repositioning here to control uh, more space down through this diagonal. And now the knight jumps in here uh, to attack this unprotected pawn. And then after an exchange, uh, we have a face-off between the two bishops. Uh, but this is a valuable defensive bishop that black does not want to lose uh, because it helps protect the dark squares around the king. So f6 would be played to drive this bishop away. Uh, but this is how the computer says the game may have continued. But if we go back here, uh, after c5 was played by white, well then uh, I missed this rook to e8 move with the fight for the e5 square. Uh, and instead, um, I jumped here up to e4. And my reasoning here was to exchange off some pieces and try and give black some more space. Uh, and that's uh, one strategy. If you're in a cramped position, which black is a little more cramped here, a way to relieve that cramped position is to trade off some pieces so that your remaining pieces have more room to maneuver. Uh, and so after uh, knight to f3, my opponent did not capture, although here it looks like capturing would have been the best move. So in this position, I was trying to decide whether to uh, you know, capture the knight, capture the bishop. I thought, well, maybe I should capture the bishop and take away his bishop pair, and then I would have a bishop pair, which can be an advantage. But then I thought, well, this is a bad bishop behind these uh, dark squared pawns anyway. So, uh, you know, maybe I will just take his knight instead. And here the computer recommends that the best move was to capture the bishop here on d2. But instead, I captured the knight. And then he recaptures with the bishop, which is the best move, because now this bishop is lined up on this diagonal, facing off against my bishop, but also helping to cover this e5 square uh, with the knight and this pawn. All right, so the game continued with me just developing my knight, and it looks like bishop to g4 was a preferred move by the computer. But then my opponent castles, which was an excellent move. Uh, the game is about even now. And I decide to play f5, and it says this is an inaccuracy. But my reasoning behind this was to take control of this uh, e4 square here so that this pawn would not be able to push forward and I would be able to use this as an outpost with my knight here to jump to f6 and then to uh, e4. But it looks like queen to e7, just developing uh, another piece off the back rank would have been better. And so now the game is uh, slightly in white's favor. 
So uh, the knight moves here, uh, threatening to jump in the e6 and fork my queen and my rook uh, and even the bishop here. So uh, I just move my knight, develop the knight to a better square and getting ready to head possibly to e4. But this also allows my bishop to cover this e6 square. All right, so now we have rook to b1, uh, which is a good move, although the computer prefers a4, pushing a pawn immediately. Uh, but this move backs up the b pawn, and we see that in the center here, my pawns are pointing towards white's kingside. Uh, and white's pawns are pointing towards my queen side. So generally, you want to funnel your pieces in the direction that the pawns are pointing because there's usually more space in that direction, uh, more space behind your pawns that give your pieces room to maneuver and uh, slowly move in that direction and be able to form a better, or have a better chance of forming an attack because they'll have extra space. So white is aimed at my queen side, so he will continue to push his pawns in that direction, and I should be pushing uh, towards the king side with my pieces and pawns. All right, so now we have knight to e4. Here, once again, I thought, well, I will try and trade off some pieces and uh, you know attack this knight and I can chase it away if he does not you know capture me here but he captures and I thought well now I can capture my with my pawn the F pawn towards the center and even though I've doubled pawns here uh, this rook has more scope now and uh, I thought well I can always push this pawn here and you know, trade off, get rid of my doubled pawn. So the game continued with b4. So now I'm going to push towards the king side while white pushes towards the queen side. So maybe uh, I could have played a3 here to slow down his attack. Uh, but, and here the computer recommends f3 uh, to immediately attack the head of my pawn chain here. Uh, so that's what the computer recommends as best move, but he plays b4. And now I play bishop to f5, and I was thinking, well, I could push this pawn forward and have a discovered attack on his rook. Uh, and so I also get the bishop off the back rank. And now uh, the computer prefers bishop to f5 it looks like which would pin this pawn to the queen and maybe help fight for this f3 square along with this pawn uh, but you know f3 could still be played if i capture and he captures uh, then my bishop would have to retreat all right, so e3 was played to prevent me from pushing the pawn with the discovered attack on the rook. Uh, and now it says that e3 was a mistake. And so I tried to look at why e3 was a mistake because in the game, uh, I didn't play the best move. Uh, it looks like I should have played queen to c8, but I played queen to d7. Uh, but here is what the computer thinks uh, the continuation should have been. So I would line up here uh, to create a battery and exchange off this defensive bishop, which anytime there's a fianchettoed bishop, or not anytime, but most of the time, when there's a fianchettoed bishop, the bishop j does a good job of covering these squares that have been weakened because this pawn pushes forward. So the G pawn is pushed to G3 and no longer protects F3 and H3. And so the bishop does that job now. So if you can exchange off this bishop with your light squared bishop, it'll leave weaknesses around the king. So that's why it's a good idea to form this battery. And uh, now we have 
black pushing towards the king side, white pushing towards the queen side, and after capture, capture, uh, now doubling up on the B file is what the computer recommends for white, and black ignores that, attacking towards the king side after a capture of this pawn. Uh, now white has a, a gap in his king side defenses, and computer recommended g4 as a continuation attacking this queen and uh, also allowing room for this rook to operate and so the queen would retreat but uh, I guess move away from this bishop not quite a retreat push forward kind of an attacking retreat uh, so the bishop excuse me, the bishop chases the queen over to the queen side where it wants to go anyway and form an attack here. And so black ignores that, attacking on the king side, and the game may have continued like this with some exchanges. And then uh, we see the bishops kind of maneuvering around. And so uh, this is how the game could have progressed where it shows black slightly ahead but white does have this passed pawn on the queen side here and uh, in exchange black is building some pressure up on the king side over here so an interesting possibility uh, that did not occur so after e3 in this earlier position by white to prevent me from pushing with a discovered attack on this b1 rook, uh, we have queen to d7. So that's how I responded, although the computer preferred queen to c8. But I was still thinking the same thing. Create a battery, try and exchange off this bishop here, protecting black, or excuse me, white's king. All right, and my opponent responds with a4 continuing to attack on the queen side although the computer preferred an immediate push of b5 uh, even though that could be captured and uh, the rook would not be able to take that back so it looks like uh, after that i played queen to h3 getting ready to exchange off and the computer prefers queen or excuse me I played bishop to h3, getting ready to exchange off, and the computer prefers bishop to g4, attacking white's queen. Uh, and it may have looked like this. The queen would move, and then uh, here we would move here anyway and try and exchange off. Oh, excuse me. I, I played the wrong move there. So that is what... Uh, the computer prefers this continuation. All right. So now um, we have in the game, after a4 was played, I play bishop to h3 immediately. Uh, my opponent continues his attack, ignoring my counterattack on the king side, um, which was the best move. And so I exchange off the bishops. And now, uh, rook to f3, the best move. And what this move does is, as you see these pawn chains, I'm pointing towards the king side, so I funnel my pieces up in that direction. And moving this rook to f3 uh, stops his f pawn from moving and attacking my e pawn, and it cramps his position around his king, and I'll be able to double up rooks over here. And so the game continued with white ignoring this and getting ready to double up on the B file. Uh, so I double up here and he doubles on the opposite side of the board over here. So we kind of have a game where attacks are happening on opposite sides of the board. And it looks like black is currently in the lead here um, and the computer says that queen to e2 would have been a better move. 
And why is qu queen to a b1 a mistake? Well, it allows queen to f5, which I overlooked in the game. And what does that do? Well, it just threatens to put more pressure uh, on this f file. And uh, it looks like after this, queen to e1 would be the best move to help protect uh, this f pawn here and kind of slow down black's attack but in the game i played bishop to h6 instead uh, which is a miss and so uh, after pawn captures pawn captures and here it said it would have been better to capture with the queen so you know that's interesting i mean i guess if I capture that way, then I would be attacking this pawn and we could trade off pawns. But uh, I wanted to keep my queen on this diagonal so I could kind of move up here towards the uh, king, white's king side here. So uh, rook to e1 was played and this is a mistake. Uh, and so my opponent moved here to move this rook up and help protect this f pawn uh, but it looks like rook to e1 was a mistake rook to b8 would have been best which my opponent i believe played anyway uh, but i did not take advantage of that mistake it looks like after rook to e1 uh, the best move is queen to f5 and I did not see that move. I just moved bishop to g5. Or excuse me. Uh, this is what the computer recommended. Let me see here. Uh, hmm. Interesting. I must have found these moves earlier. And this is what the computer recommended. Now it's recommending queen to f5. Uh, but this bishop move is what the computer recommended. Uh, as a response uh, and so let me go back I hope I didn't confuse you uh, so after rook to e1 that was played in the game and it says that is a mistake that rook to b8 would have been better uh, and in response huh, I did play queen to f5 anyway so all right, well, here's a response that the computer showed me when I did the game review. Uh, the computer recommended that the game progress like this. And I don't know, this is kind of an interesting possibility, but I don't know. If we look at this, um, it's interesting. So this is one way the game could have continued. After this capture, um, White would have to recapture and he would have broken pawns here. Um, and his pawn, you know, these pawns would be weak and Black would have an advantage and be able to pick off this pawn and possibly the uh, a and uh, C pawns, but the game did not go this way. So after rook to E1 in the game played by white, uh, I did respond with queen to F5. And here it says queen to F5 is excellent, but it recommended bishop to G5. So uh, after rook at e to e2, that was played next. Uh, it says that this is a mistake. And once again, I was not able to capitalize on uh, this mistake by my opponent. So it looks like after rook at e to e2, I should have played bishop captures here. And this would have been a brilliant move so of course i missed it and 
uh, it recommends queen to e1 in response because if we have a capture here, let's see. Well, we'll see how it would play out. Um, what about the rook capture? So if we have the rook capture, well then we just capture here and you know, after rook captures, queen captures with check. So let's take a look at it here. Um, check. The king would have to move. Um, so king to h1. And then the queen would capture. And hmm, this would be an interesting position. But black would be ahead here as he has a rook. Uh, facing off against white's bishop and the king is kind of in an open position here all right so that is one possibility so let's see here after bishop takes e3 uh, another possibility would be uh, the pawn captures so that would allow, and this is tricky stuff here, it would allow an attack on the queen, okay. Hmm. So that's interesting. And then what do you do against that? It recommends, well, if the queen moves out of the way, then what do we have? an attack here so let's say oh i don't know the queen moves back here then what well then we have a mate in two with rook to g1 ah okay and that would force the king that's that's a little tricky to see that now the king is forced to take that and then we have a mate here. So, yeah, crazy stuff. Study those tactics. I, I would have missed that. Um, all right, so let's kind of get out of this maze of uh, combinations here and go back. After rook at e to e2, um, I responded with bishop to g5. So I missed my opportunity of capturing here and breaking open the position. And, you know, I was kind of looking at if there was some breakthrough here and I just could not see through the uh, combinations. All right, so now we had bishop to e1 was played by my opponent and this was a blunder. So, uh, this was a blunder because it allows the rook takes e3 now. So rook takes e3 and then the king, the computer recommends moving here uh, because if there was a capture by the pawn, we would have a checkmate here. Hmm. Um, crazy stuff here so anyway the computer recommends this move next and then the queen helping to protect here and then rook to d3 so that is an interesting uh, continuation that the computer says may have happened um, but after bishop to g5 in the game my opponent responds with this bishop to e1, and then I miss the best move and play h5 here. Although I'm still uh, ahead in this position, my opponent responds with the best move, rook to b8. And so I continue with my attack, and now we have capture, which is best. And here uh, I capture with the king. And I debated here whether to capture with the queen, and that was the best move to capture with the queen. 
Um, but I wanted to keep my queen up here to you know, try and put pressure on this king. And I was calculating out uh, an attack. And now the missed check will come into play here um, in this calculation. So I wanted to keep my queen here. And I was trying to calculate how to break through and get a mating attack. And I overlooked a check by my opponent, you know, that ended up costing me the game. So we'll see how that played out. So here uh, we have this queen move putting me in check. So I just move up here uh, and my opponent, instead of capturing a pawn here, he just moves up. And this was a blunder. So the best move would have been rook to b2. So if we go back and take a look at this, it looks like rook to b2 is the best move. Uh, queen to h8 is the second best move, threatening to move here and check the king and maybe chase the king around. Um, but uh, my opponent plays this move, which is a blunder. And so now, you know, I overlook how to take advantage of this blunder. It looks like, uh, let's see, after queen to c7, it looks like once again a rook sacrifice here, uh, or, you know, a rook capture of the pawn on g3 would have been better, or even h takes g3 or h3, uh, which is what I ended up playing was h3. Although the best move is rook captures on g3 here. Uh, but uh, here is what the computer recommends that white should have done. Rook to b2. And then now a capture here. Uh, recapture. Queen checks. And now this move by white. A great move uh, which slows down this checkmating threat here, uh, which this was my plan or similar to it in the game was to get a checkmate here on G3. Uh, and we'll see how that progressed and you know ultimately failed here in a little bit. All right, so this move would stop the checkmate threat. And then uh, after pinning the rook to the king with the bishop, and capturing a pawn in the process. We have uh, queen captures, pawn captures, and black scoops up another pawn. And this is how the computer says the game may have progressed. Uh, but in this position, it's still pretty tricky. We have white, or excuse me, black moving all of his pawns to the opposite colored squares as white's bishop and he has three pawns uh, for white's bishop so even material but still uh, this is kind of tricky because white may be able to move over and pick off this pawn you know and have an extra pawn here uh, but black may have some activity in the center here with this pawn majority uh, and so the computer says the game may have continued in this fashion. Uh, but I don't know. In this position, um, the game, the computer gives the evaluation as even, but maybe white has a, a slight advantage here because there's probably an opportunity to possibly pick off this pawn. You know, although... Uh, e5 can be played and you're trading off these two pawns and then this pawn can possibly push forward. Uh, but then the bishop and king should be able to do a good job of holding off uh, the momentum of these pawns pushing forward. All right. Um, so let's see how the game actually progressed. After queen to c7, a blunder by white, um, I play h3 with check, uh, which was a good move, but not best. 
And then uh, it looks like the best move was rook captures instead. Then after capture, queen check, uh, trading off here. And now check, attacking the queen, queen to f4, and then a capture of the bishop here. So that is what the computer says that I missed. And, you know, of course the computer will find these difficult lines because I did not see that uh, combination at all. Um, all right, so after h3 check, the king moves to g1, and now I commit a blunder, thinking that I could break through with my checkmating threat, uh, but I overlooked and missed a check, which you know lost the game for me. So let's see how that played out. Uh, it looks like instead of this blunder of bishop takes e3, uh, I should have played queen to g4, and then maybe the game would have played out in this fashion. And this is just what the computer recommends. Uh, and I'll play a few more moves. And it looks like, you know, in this position, black would be winning. Um... But anyway, the game did not play out in this fashion because I committed a blunder. So I thought I had a winning checkmate here, but I overlooked a check by my opponent. So king safety, always keep an eye on your king safety and watch out for surprise checks that can ruin your attack. All right, so after... That, he recaptures with his rook, which was best. I capture, um, which is an inaccuracy. There it says queen to f6 would have been better, but then I would have just been uh, behind in material. Anyway, and I thought I had a winning attack after here and a mate threat on g2. Uh, but now you can see probably the... Uh, the move that wrecks my attack, and that was a queen to f4. So checking me and attacking my queen, and uh, after you know making a mistake and realizing it after this move, I make another slight mistake. The best move is for me to capture his queen. Uh, but instead, I move my king, and it says that's excellent, but not best. But now we see white is plus five ahead in this evaluation. And I should have resigned here immediately, uh, but I played on further just to see what my opponent would do. And, you know, I was uh, discouraged by my overlooked, that overlooked uh, check that I thought my pawn would be able to move here and guard this and this, and white would not be able to break through uh, because I would have my pawns on light squares. Uh, but of course that was wrong as this pawn can only move up to G5. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the game continued a little bit longer here and I can just show you this. Uh, you know, for G whiz purposes to see how white should win the game. So I try to trade off pawns if you're behind in material, trade off pawns if you can. Um, and so here I'm running out of options. And finally, my opponent trades off my pawn here and uh, after king to g3, uh, I resigned here as he has uh, this pawn, which he can push forward to g5, and it'll be protected by this bishop. Uh, he could move the bishop here and keep an eye on the base of this pawn chain. 
and watch this past pawn as well, which I would have to stay here and guard, and his king would be able to move over and uh, you know either pick this off, or if my pawn moved forward, well then his bishop could drop down and attack that. Anyway, uh, white is winning in this position, and we already see there is a possibility of mate, you know, different mating possibilities already. Okay, well, this uh, game review has gone on for quite a while, so I better end it here. And the lesson learned from this game is watch out for checks. King safety. Uh, if you're calculating uh, a possible combination, always try and look for checks. Uh, make sure you don't overlook a possible check by your opponent that can mess up or wreck your attack, uh, as it happened to me in this game. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and feel free to leave comments or suggestions. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.